my old Logitech right now. So I think I fixed it to where the green screen kind of works. Put some saturation back into my face. Uh, I think we're all set up. No pre-roll as usual because I haven't fixed the songs yet. Okay, so what we're going to do real quick is go in here to texture import and I like to use um, spotlight from a reference. So we're going to go ahead and grab some spotlight reference. We're going to grab Ira here. We're going to say texture, select it, add it to our spotlight with the little plus sign. Turn down uh, this opacity. I don't even think I need to resize it. Eh, maybe we'll resize a little bit. So we'll take this size. We'll clip that back just a little bit. And we'll go ahead and make Waffle Ira. Oh, let me close that here. And so we're going to hit Z to go out of that mode here. Not that. Okay. And uh, okay. So what do we want to start with? Let's start with the actual Waffle Maker so we can kind of orient ourselves in space. So what I'm going to do, and we need a, okay. Yeah. So here's a cylinder. Drag it on our canvas, go into edit mode, um, make poly mesh 3D. So the usual three buttons you need to hit. And then I'm going to hit X to go across X symmetry and turn on my floor just to make sure that Z forward, or I can hit W and you'll see the gizmos default Z forward. So Z forward, Y up. We can turn our floor off now. And I'm going to switch this over to Skin Shader 4. We're going to scale this down. Where do I want to start with this? I guess, you know what, we'll simplify this. So uh, we st we're going to just keep the regular 32 or whatever the default is. That's totally fine. And we're going to line this up. I'm not going to worry too, too much about um, perspective just now. This is just going to be kind of just getting a block out, and I can go ahead and uh, make changes to this. But I do need to get rid of those extra spans. So I'm going to go over here to Geometry, Edge Loop, and we're going to say uh, Delete Loops, and that'll get rid of those. So we've got a kind of, kind of a simplified... Uh, thing here. So we've got the top part basically and it, it kind of indents in a little bit. So what I'm going to do is let's go into poly groups under your poly groups menu and we'll go to group by normals and we're going to hover over a face with our Z modeler brush BZM and we're going to say inset poly group all legacy. Sorry it's going to take me a second to get warmed up here. Literally warmed up. It's, it's cold in here. And so there's like kind of a top ring. Uh, oh, also while we're thinking about this, go and do movie timeline show and put a little dot in there so that we can snap back to this if we need to. We'll move this, I have a feeling, uh, as we continue. But since this is just round-ish, I think we're in good shape. So I need to move the bottom of this. Um, one way to do that, if you go into Shift-Z, you can hit W and then Control-Tap the bottom here and then use your arrow keys to snap back. And then you can just move uh, this down. And then while we're down there, we can also scale this out. We can do a uniform scale since we've set our pivot. So we can kind of just um, uniform scale and move down. And that's kind of the overall shape I'm looking for. Of course, it kind of bends out and then bends back in. And we can do that with our Z modeler brush. So we're going to say insert multiple edge loops, interactive elevation. Um, we'll click and pull and we'll kind of match that curvature here. And then we're going to click and pull in. There we go and we'll kind of match the curvature uh, back in. So there's kind of the scoop out, here's the scoop in, and in fact, we'll even do another click and pull and we'll kind of bend that out just a bit there. So that looks like a basic shape to you. If you want to rearrange these, uh, you can go in here and you can say uh, group by normals again. And I'm gonna actually slide this down. So we'll go ahead and say slide, edge loop complete. I mean, it actually, I mean, I guess I can have the, this looks like it, it has a pretty severe indentation right here. So I'm actually not, uh, this is probably correct-ish, uh, but if we want, we can also go in here to scale measure the complete. We can just kind of scale this back or whatever, or we could just pop a bevel on here. So we'll say bevel edge loop here. And let's kind of put one in here and maybe we'll slide this back. So I don't know, massage this as much as you want to. It's a garbage pail kid card, so I'm not too concerned. And then we're gonna go through here not to besmirch the brand. Um, I just don't think it's gonna make or break this. So control W, control W. So shift Z, turn this back. So we've got the beginnings of this and that lid comes down and meets this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take both of the, oh, first sub tool, duplicate this off, grab the orange and the pink, geometry modified topology, delete hidden. And this will be the start of our lid up here. 
I'll go ahead and keep it solid, I think, because we can always just extrude in. So I'm going to say uh, Q mesh or extrude is fine. Uh, we'll do all polygons. We'll just kind of pull up. And that'll kind of give us the beginning of our thickness. And in fact, it goes up and it has a little bit of a lip. So I'm going to extrude this up one more time, except we're going to switch it to polygroup all here and Q mesh or extrude will work in that case. And then one more time. So we've got the little first lip, the little indentation, and then the second lip here. And now I can just hold down shift to pull this up. Now, I don't know exactly how high I need to go, but at least I know it. if I was to put this down, it would generally fit. So in order to get that to flip backwards, we're going to go ahead and set the pivot. So we have X symmetry turned on and we're Z forward, right? So that means back here, so let's turn off X symmetry. Let's go to unmatch mesh center. I'm going to push this back here and we're just going to hold, I'm holding down alt and I'm just going to go back to this back corner here because that'll be where that pivot is. So now if I again use my arrow keys to snap back and again, we're not using perspective just now, but we'll get there. We can rotate this back to where it should be ish. Um, now it's the drawings a little bit off for my model. Not a huge deal right now. We can always massage in a bit. I'm just using this to kind of determine what kind of thickness I'm going to need. Um, and having said that, so we'll go ahead and shift Z to turn that off. I'm going to hit W control tap this and we'll kind of move. So you can kind of see what's happening here. So right about here is kind of where it breaks, but it also kind of indents in a little bit. So let's pull this up. And then again, like we used before, we'll go in here and we'll say scale edge loop complete. We'll kind of push this back a little bit. And I'm just going to cap this to kind of dome it out. I think we'll be okay. So control shift tap that green. Geometry modified topology, delete hidden, hover over an edge. We'll say close convex hole and we'll click and pull and we'll just kind of round that out a little bit. And then we'll go ahead and uh, Check our math here. If it needs to bow out more, I can also just alt tap on the bottom here and we can just use this to kind of scale it out. So I can kind of be the beginnings of this. And if I need to, I can go in here and bevel as we complete. Maybe not the best way to go about that, but I think we've got the general shape. So um, let's go ahead and alt tap this one. We'll hit W uh, again. We'll turn off X symmetry, go to a mesh mesh center, or we'll alt tap here. X symmetry turned on. Okay, so now I'm going to turn on perspective. It's just kind of a pain to model with perspective on with Z modeler because it throws your pivot off. And I think we've generally got it. I think that'll, that's generally will work. And then as far as the lid goes, um, we can, I'm just going to double check. It's, I don't want to change the dimensions, but I also don't want to do anything drastic based on a camera angle that doesn't quite match. I think that works just fine. Um, it looks like that ring needs to come down just a little bit. It's a little bit heavy handed on mine here. So we'll just kind of line that up. I know it's kind of the boring part, but bear with me. Uh, so we're going to slide edge loop complete. I mean, this is all going to be boring. If you're expecting excitement, you came to the wrong channel, but there we go. So this, there we go. We got the indentation and it looks like, yeah, this is interesting, I suppose. So over here, it also looks like it has kind of an indentation on here. But then as it goes over here, kind of smooths out. Um, so I'll leave that up to your artistic standards if you want to put one in there. Uh, I think it's okay with that one, but uh, that'll be a good start. John Yu, good morning. Um, yes, and in fact, yeah, so this is, yeah, first Thursday of the month. Usually my Tuesdays come before my Thursdays, but in this month it didn't. And then uh, I'll be streaming on Pixelogic's channel on Tuesday. That's going to be a rough day, but we'll do it. Um, excellent. Yeah, man, these were... I, so I, I had to kind of pick and choose which ones I wanted to do because I have to be able to complete it in a couple hours. So I kind of just went through and grabbed some simple ones. Um, there's also some going... Because, man, they have websites that have like all like 16 seasons of them. I didn't even know there was that many. I remember these from when I was just a wee lad. But um, there were some problematic ones, but there was also like I couldn't I didn't want to sit here and model a kid, uh, a garbage pail kid for two hours and then have to do the other half another two hours. So I figured this would be a nice, easy one. Uh, <laughs> I should I should do a month long everyday series of one of these uh, more tutorials about the gorilla mech. Yeah, I, I, I had a whole I have a whole thing. I don't know. Um, 
there's a couple things I need to finish and then I want to revamp that one. I, looking back on it, I have a whole series recorded about this big gorilla uh, mech thing and it's just not, it's not that great. So, or at least the end result's not that great. It, the, the, the techniques are fine, I suppose, but. Um, hey, Hannibal. Good morning. Uh, how would you go about creating razor stubble for a statue print? Well, I would use fiber mesh, but I would crank up the coverage and also dial in. I mean, I actually did that here. Um, <laughs> come on, go back to my profile here. There it is. Don't you see the NFT messages I get in my <laughs> inbox on our station? Uh, what did we do? This was the cowboy. Uh, where is the three E three D carriers? So for print on him, I mean it was a little heavier than five o'clock stubble, I suppose. But you can kind of see. Let's take a look and see if I can see. Yeah, well, you, I guess the stubble is just kind of painted in. Uh, but yeah, maybe fiber mesh or nano mesh, but the fiber mesh you'll crank up the coverage and you'll have to in your settings. You don't want to leave it up to chance, so you'll go in here and you'll say what is it called? Coverage and then down here under preview, no, APR settings, export curves, no. Um APR settings, subdiv, tip, and root and ISO. Somewhere in here, it's been a while since I've actually used this. Uh, oh, profile. Turn this profile up to four or higher uh, in order to make it real geometry, uh, unless you want to do like a BPR convert to geo thing, which don't bother with that. So yeah, crank your coverage up, make your length what it needs to be, dial in how many fibers you want, comb it if you need to, but stubble, so probably not. Um, and then crank your profile up. Segments, you don't need that many. Um, but then again, it may not print that well. So, um, Oh, really? They're sued by Cabbage Patch. I guess I could see that. Um, this fat little little toddler faces. Um, cartoony style. Um, cool. Uh, way to get the settings. I'm doing the first one. Um, yeah, so I, I mean, I don't, honestly, I don't know the settings. Uh, they ended up just painting it on, which honestly, depending on the scale you're working on, for if it's just a head, maybe that's a better idea. So we got this here, and or you know what? If I'm probably overthinking it, you could probably just go in here with a standard brush, spray stroke, alpha set to like alpha 07 or alpha 23, and just spray some bumps on his face because yeah if it's like one one sixteenth scale or something it's just going to be noise anyway you print it out if it's fiber mesh i suppose i don't know i have to do some tests okay so uh, we got this all lined up here we got perspective turned off so we can just go ahead and crank on this so let's go ahead and talk about waffle pattern so i'm going to alt tap here uh you know what let's do this i'm going to insert a plain 3d w Hold down shift so we can snap this to negative 90 degrees. We'll pull it up a little bit. And I'm just going to scale this out to match. In fact, I'm going to turn off fill so we can see this even better. So as I scale this up, let's hit Z and we'll turn our opacity back up just a bit here. So now um, we're just going to generally kind of match the pattern here. It looks like maybe here. So we got, let's see, here's one, one. Eh. Oh, the other thing with two, uh, you know, the person who painted this probably had used perspective, right? So we'll go ahead and turn that on temporarily again, and we'll just kind of mash this up. And I, I'm, I don't think they'll fire me if I don't get this perfect, but while I'm here, I might as well get as close as I can. So I think that works. That's generally uh, what I'm looking for here. So we'll turn fill back on here, and I'm going to go through, and I'm just going to uh, just make sure I have enough of the waffle tread here, so we're gonna alt paint here, do 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 do, and this will get us all of our waffle squares. So control shift, geometry modified topology, delete hidden, control W. Now, let's think about this because this might be 
Interesting. So we've got waffle set up. I'm gonna go through here. We're gonna do extrude polygroup ball. We're gonna pull this up. We're gonna do this double sided. So I'm gonna do, um, I'm gonna turn on X to go into X symmetry, but I'm gonna go into transform. We're gonna do symmetry in the Y direction. And we're also gonna say local symmetry because I want it on the axis of the object, not the world axis. So if we do a geometry modified topology mirror and weld in the Y, you'll see it'll, you know, mirror it in the Y direction. And then if I was to go through here, I'll hold down alt and then extrude, you'll see it'll go both directions. Um, that will just help my brain, I have a feeling. So go back here, we have these lined up. Um, but first, I'm gonna turn this plane off. So this will be the Boolean waffle here, but if we turn this off and we go back, this part here needs to be separate. So we're gonna go ahead and push this down and then we're going to, um, is that what we're gonna do? Let me think about this. Here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna duplicate this off. We're gonna hold down Control Shift. Geometry Modified Topology, Delete Hidden. Go in Solo Mode. Um, I'm going to extrude downwards. Of course, you gotta go to Display Properties. Flip way down here. So I've shown it once. Now I'm just gonna use my custom menu. So that'll be my kind of inset thing. And we do wanna bring these edges in just a little bit. Um, you could use Gizmo or you can just extrude poly your ball, then hold down Shift, and then just push that blue one in just a little bit. So now Alt Tap back on here. And this one, we'll just say extrude polygroup ball, we'll pull this down so that now we've got a little waffle iron that fits uh, right inside of there. So now we can kind of, and I think it's fairly flush with it, looks like. So, okay, I think we're in good shape. So that's fine. And then now we got to figure out this, this waffle. So using my brain, which is where it gets difficult here, um, as these indent down okay so extrude polygroup ball i'm gonna hold down shift we're just gonna pull this so we get decent thickness on here uh, i'm gonna do inset polygroup ball each poly legacy and we're gonna pull this in a little bit and this will be the gaps here i'm gonna pull this in uh, more so that'll be kind of the waffles uh, i think this is right and then we're gonna say <laughs> q mesh polygroup ball i don't know what i'm doing Hold down shift. Yeah, something like that. So now, let's see. That's where I start getting sweaty. So here we go. We're gonna take make this subtractive here. And then this is the up, this is the lid here. This is the waffle iron. So we'll move this down. I'm gonna turn off everything but these two because that's all I really care about right now. Uh, turn on live Boolean polyframe. Hey, look at that. So um, we have our waffle pattern that we can pull up and down. Also, let's take the cylinder here and we'll say uh, crease PG and then we'll say dynamic so it'll smooth it out. Um, and then now we can say, okay, we've got the, we don't want to move the waffle iron necessarily, but here's the waffle pattern. So we can kind of push this down. Looks like it's recessed quite a bit. So that'll be the waffle pattern. So let's double check our work. We'll turn on perspective. Uh, we'll turn these back on. We'll move this out of the way, and we'll say, that look about right. Uh, also, the other thing too you'll notice is this this waffle thing is now cutting through because it's it's a, ordered in a stack here. But if I do a new start group, that'll ignore uh, this one here. In fact, we'll just go through here. We'll say uh, crease PG. We'll turn on dynamic. Why not? And same here, crease PG, turn on dynamic. Now we are gonna hollow this one out. Actually, this one we can't crease PG because our PGs are messed up. So let's go ahead and say uh, group by normals. Again, nice, uncrease all, crease PG, there we go. Now, uh, I think that looks right. Consensus, let's see here, polyframe, so that's our Waffle here. I think that'll work. Um, oh, quarter scale. That's a big one. Um, yeah, I, man, that's that's one where I, I definitely send it to the printer to do a couple tests to see. Um, not a stubble 3D print expert for sure. Could you slice curve circle the grid pattern? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I like having the interaction of the Boolean just just well i mean the grid pattern itself yeah i don't know that's a tough one because it's 
there's some math involved in that. Um, you do a bit of while it was here. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Doug. I've been doing okay, Glitch. Uh, I have some renovations at the house. I just got new carpet in my office, so I finally got my office back. I don't have my camera set up, so I'm using my old Logitech, like I said, at the beginning. Um, other than that, I'm fine. I can't complain. Life's good, I suppose, right? So uh, now, okay, we're getting into the interesting stuff, maybe. Uh, we have some more non-interesting things to talk about, though. Um, although, does this match? Yeah, I guess that match is. Okay, so you know what? We can go ahead and put that indentity, indent, ooh, indentation in there. So uh, here is where that line is that we have. So I'm going to go ahead and turn live building off for now. And I'm going to go in here with my Z modeler brush. We're going to say polygroup poly loop, and we're going to polygroup that. And instead of just pushing this straight back, I'm going to go inset polygroup ball. I just like to do a oop, inset polygroup ball, not each poly region. So we're going to pull this in just a tad, and then we'll go back to like Q mesh or whatever, and we'll hold down shift and just push along there. So now if I do a crease PG and then hit D for dynamic, we don't have any fall off yet, but at least you can kind of see where I'm going with that intention. D indentation. Okay, so now let me think about order of operations. At this point, we need to save. Save as uh, garbage pail here, and we'll call this save incrementally, folks. So now uh, we've got that, we've got the waffle iron. So now we need to put, well, we need to do the waffle iron pattern on the top, but I think, wait, do those? I don't have a waffle in front of me, but are those the same pattern on top? Because when you press it down, it looks like it presses down from the other side. Yeah, it's the same. So I'm just gonna move, once I boolean in this here, um, I'm just going to flip this up and fit it in here. I think that'll work. So nothing fancy involved there. So order of operations. Um, I've already saved this file off and I could save it as waffle working. I'm gonna go ahead and take a leap here. I can always save these and put them in a folder and hide them, it doesn't really matter, but I'm gonna hide everything but what I care about as far as my Booleans go. I'm gonna go down here. I'm going to say Boolean dynamic subdivision because we use dynamic subdivision to smooth this out. There's some iffy things here that we could clean up, but I don't care that much. Uh, make Boolean mesh, and that'll throw out a U mesh here of the actual Boolean. So this is all the actual geometry here. Normally I would say like, hey, keep track your poly groups. And we have, well, we would should have had a poly group on each side, but even on this, in this case here, we could go in here and say, you know, group by normals. And then you could give it a shot. You could say zero mesh, depth size down quite a bit, keep group, smooth groups down to zero and Z remesh and see if it gives you an okay result. It, it said that this is a tricky complex shape with probably some nasty stuff going on. So we'll say maybe weld points first and Z remesh. Um, but I don't know how, how worthwhile this endeavor would be, honestly. You know, let's try one more. We'll do double, give it some more geometry because sometimes you need to throw more geometry than you think. And sometimes also this geometry, that's not terrible. Um, I don't know, you could keep playing with this. Let's say turn off double. Now that I've seen it kind of work, I'm intrigued. <laughs> I don't feel like messing with this, so we'll just dynamesh that. Wait, when in doubt, in ZBrush, eh, just dynamesh your way out of problems. That's my motto. So, okay, we're gonna go in here and we're gonna append this U mesh here. And at this point, I already got the file saved. I'm gonna go ahead and just say, you know what? We don't need this one anymore. And we don't need this one anymore. So now we'll keep it simple, folks. I'm a simple person by nature, and when I'm live streaming, my brain doesn't work too good. So we've got the waffle here. So now let's talk about putting his little waffle body on here. That's the best way to go about that. Let's append plane here, and this is one of my crutches. Hold down shift, and again, we'll rotate this down to 90 degrees so we can put this just above here. Shift Z, we'll use our arrow keys to snap this back. We'll go ahead and scale this out just a bit. And I'm just going to hit, um, now when you append a primitive, it automatically makes it a poly mesh 3D. You don't have primitive options. Um, so we're so we're just going to go ahead and hold down control and then hit control D to subdivide this up to about a million. And of course, all that is is just hitting this divide key button. Um, although, let's hit shift Z. Let's go to the front. And uh, we'll have X symmetry turned on. And in this case, 
Yep, that's correct. So here, hex symmetry turned on. I don't know why that threw me. And uh, screw that. Let's go into standard brush. Let's turn off spray stroke. Let's do uh, control alt F, which is my hotkey for color fill object. We'll choose just a light red because I just need to know where the midpoint is. And we'll just hold down shift, I suppose. And we'll just turn on RGB, turn off Z add. And in fact, let's tap L to turn off lazy mouse so I can just grab this and just pull down. Oh, just shift, Mike. There we go. So there's my midline. Um, let's go in here to drop our RGB intensity down. We'll go back to a white color. We'll do color fill object. We'll knock that back. Again, I'm just kind of looking for uh, the midline. So now if I go back in here, stupid, stupid, stupid. Let's do it this way because technically he is in the Z direction. Okay. So you know what? Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start with a line here just to kind of indicate where my bend line is and then I'm just going to mask. I just want a thin little line down the middle. You know, I guess I could use polygroups for that. Um, and now we'll do control alt F and then again white. And we'll knock this back color. Boop, 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 boop. There we go. So now we have symmetry in the Z. We've got our midline here and the reason I need the midline is again I'm, if I turn on perspective I can try to line it up. Who cares? Um, it's not important for this part, but I am going to have to slightly rotate my camera in order to go down the middle of his body because we are going to paint him temporarily and then we're going to recreate him in 3D. So we've lined up our camera. We've got standard brush, RGB on, RGB intensity up to 100, samples, spotlight projection. So now we can go in here and paint his little waffle body onto this card here. And that'll generally, this will kind of give it, it's not going to be perfect. Um, that's a good starting point. So here's, we can go in, we can actually, I'm just moving geometry with my move brush, but it's kind of like a cool liquify thing. So we can even go in here to our move accu. And if you don't know what that is, I'll tell you um, curve, accu curve turned on with your move brush and then I'll pull to points, which is nice. Uh, here, out and around, yep, goes in. He's got a little fat little roll here and then down to the legs looks right. Okay, that wasn't too far off. I think his head's a, I wanna say his head's a little bit bigger, so we'll exaggerate that just a bit. Okay, um, good enough for me. So let's go through here. Let's say delete lower. You know what, not even that much. We don't even need that much resolution. So there's a level five, delete higher, delete lower. Go through here and we'll hold down control and we're just gonna mask um, where this body is. So here's where his arms are. And then there's a little fat roll and then the little leg. And there's a bit of a thigh gap in there. We'll make sure we maintain that because it is fairly pronounced. There's a decent set. It doesn't go to a point basically. So we'll watch that, uh, especially when you start zero meshing. Sometimes I'll get rid of that. So control alt and tap and that'll sharpen up your mask. Uh, we can go ahead and turn off our poly paint by touching this and make sure that, yeah, okay, that's generally, I think his head's a little rounder. That's generally the shape we want. Works for me, work for y'all. Good enough. Okay, so we've got this polyframe here. Um, you can go into geometry, edge loop mask border. That'll do a little slice around your mask. We say delete hidden. Uh, we do have X symmetry turned on. We'll lean into that. Depth size down to zero. Zero mesh. Target polygon count of five is fine. What well, zero mesh? Um, cool. Yeah, I've been doing all right. Uh, way to randomize thin cylinders as a nano. Yes. Uh, yeah, that's just a basic. Yeah, let's do this. So zero mesh or half. 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 There we go. Um, so now if we go in here and we say, let's do a quick save. So again, if we have a cylinder here, we can say, okay, what modifications do we want? Well, we want a really simple cylinder. So we'll go in here to uni initialize H divides maybe down to 12 and V divides down to like four. And here's our simple cylinder. We'll go ahead and turn this into a, uh, let's go ahead and make polymesh studio just in case. Uh, B, create insert mesh new. And now you have a new um, cylinder here. So we can go in here and we can say 
uh, great. So we have a new brush. So if we hit B, there's a new brush. Brush, create, uh, nano mesh brush. So now if we go back to, for example, this thing, we want to grow some cylinder stubble on it. We can say insert nano mesh, polygroup all. We can pull out a cylinder. Of course, not very randomized, right? Well, that's the power of nano mesh. They're just instances. So now we can go over here. We can adjust the height here. Um, the overall size here and then you could do height variance so now it's varianted um, you could do width and length variances but it's probably not gonna look that good they're all generally stubble right and then you could even go down here to random distribution and start randomly distributing stubble if you wanted to um, the random distribution overlap stuff so I don't know if it's great you can also use xgen is probably what I might also do if fiber mesh doesn't work out so anyway, um, we'll go ahead and get rid of those nano mesh eyes. Okay, so oh, that's what I was worried about. We lost our thigh gap. So let's go through here. I'm gonna do a quick weld points here just to kind of weld this up. And let's go in here and say bevel, edge loop complete. We'll just put a bevel, hmm. Okay, bevel's not gonna work. Let's do an extender, just a slight extender. Just a little baby extender down the middle here because I need edge rings here. We'll do it, increase all. Control W, make it all in polygroup. So now we have our thigh gap again. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and spread these out just a little bit here. So we're just gonna unmask these. W, um, there it is. Go back to gizmo so I can scale these out a little bit. Good enough. So now we have our little waffle guy here and he's a little bit big, but at least he's the right shape. So now we can go through here and we can kind of scale him to fit our overall uh, pan and you know what I did make his head a little bit bigger just because it seemed right But now when he's in perspective, I realize the head kind of should be smaller, but that's okay So I'm gonna go ahead and keep this generally centered and Okay, so now how do we get the waffle imprint on our waffle body? Well first we need thickness on our waffle body so Q mesh polygroup ball We'll pull this up and we'll go ahead and do a crease PG uh, We can even hit D for dynamic because why not and then now as I push this waffle body onto the waffle iron, that should Boolean out. Um, let's thicken them up just a little bit. I can always thin them out as needed. So here's what we're gonna do. Give me waffle iron, but I wanna keep the waffle iron, which is fine, I'm just gonna Boolean, but for temporarily, and you know what, let's play it safe. Duplicate this off, put that down at the bottom, subtractive, Boolean on, polyframe off, so there's the bottom of his waffle body. Although we are gonna need to, let's turn off light boolean here. Move this down here. His feet are gonna overlap a bit, but I'm gonna have him just kinda sit on here. Squish him it just a bit. because we are gonna kind of mess up his edges. I just want him to kind of just, just fit on there like he is in the reference. Now we could even go through here. Oh, so if we are gonna move this around, you wanna make sure if you go down here to depth, we'll do infinite depth in the Y direction because we're looking straight down. Um, you can also turn that on for move accu if you want, if you wanna pull into points. So now we're just gonna go through here and we're gonna modify this just a bit. Um, oops, we'll go ahead and turn on X symmetry which is actually Z symmetry. So turn on, use X to turn on symmetry and then a transform is under Z. And then we'll kind of fudge this out a little bit just so that the arms, yeah, that's about right. The head, you know what, we'll something like this. We're using infinite depth so it goes straight back. Yeah, I think that'll work. Beep, beep, beep. Legs, yep. Thigh gap, yep. Okay. Shift D. Okay, geometry doesn't look too stressed. Not that it really matters because we're using a dynamesh this anyway. So, okay, so one more time. Let's think about this. Subtractive, live Boolean. We push his waffle body down. Oops, turn off this original one. Okay, I think that's working. Um, I'm not gonna embed him too much, so I'm gonna kinda pull him out just a bit, but at least as his waffle body 
is on the a waffle iron, it'll kind of have a, it'll leave a gap here when I dynamesh, and I think it'll generally look nice. Now, uh, we need to go ahead and take this uh, original waffle iron here, and we're gonna duplicate this one more time. We're gonna flip this, so we're gonna mirror in the Y direction here. We'll hit W, and we'll scoot this up. And let's go ahead and turn off light boolean, so. Okay, so this actually needs to go into the lid, which I didn't hold down shift, did I? That could be problematic. Um, okay, so that's been generally where the waffle comes down, they press together. However, I don't think they come all the way together because when you have waffles, they don't uh, have holes in them, right? So something like this maybe. So we'll go ahead and put this at the bottom here. We'll go ahead and say subtractive. We'll turn off everything except for what I care about. Y boolean here. Okay, so is this deep enough? Let's hit Shift Z. I think that generally works. Everybody generally okay with this? Looks waffly enough. These are a little bit thicker than my reference, but I don't care too much. I think it still reads. Uh, no, I think that's actually about right. I always forget camera distance. Does it need to be thicker? If it needs to be thicker, we can take our waffle body and we can go whoop, thicken it up. I feel like it needs to be Yeah, I think that'll work. So, we've done our job. We have a little waffle guy in here. Again, let's go ahead and save this one. Because again, we got another working file we can head back to. And if you, uh, you know, you can save these two as um, and then O2 could be waffle body working. I think we're okay on that one. Um, thank you, Ahmed. Yes, I'm in the building. Uh, I've missed a bunch, hold on. And if I miss any, I apologize, just keep shouting out. Um, yeah, bumpy face is what you'll end up getting. Although they do have, usually when I, when you have, I uh, go to ski, you know, download skin brushes and you have a stubble brush, it usually is kind of noise, if I remember correctly. Um, cool, thank you, thank you. Um, I don't speak that language, unfortunately. Uh, could you use Cloth Dynamics in order to melt the character onto the waffle iron? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you could. Yeah, why not? Yeah, you could do that. Um, <laughs> thank you. Uh, really good blame the cleanup when you want to edit with Z modeler further is painful. Yeah, I mean, especially with a con usually for not complex objects. In fact, we could even look at that. Uh, let me get my search back um, well, I need to call this out just in case you need it so zero meshing hard surface actually does really really well um, if it's if the if the shape isn't too complex but this these shapes are so complex that we're using um, wouldn't necessarily uh, do that. So if you're new to ZBrush or you need to catch up on some stuff, if you go down here to Intro to ZBrush, these little folded down corners on my station page, this will be all the updated ZBrush stuff since 4R8, and then the intro will get you up to that. So um, that's a decent place to start. And of course my YouTube channel if you want to search for anything. And all the stuff I talk about is on my YouTube channel. Um, oh cool, glad the video's been helping. Luluf. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could uh, wish I could stand up to the quality of the old masters but hey garbage pail kids I'll take that as a win um, yeah uh, this is the other thing too is always pick and choose your battles as far as like you know what really matters at the end of the day you know dynamash and clean it up brute force it who cares it's fine uh, okay, so we got our waffle body, we got our waffle iron. I do need to get a waffle iron onto that top, which might be semi-problematic. We'll see how that goes, um, but I think we're in good shape. So what I'm going to do with just this visible, uh, we'll go back down here and we'll do another make boolean mesh with dynamic subdivision. This will give us our waffle body. I'm going to append our U mesh here for our waffle body, and then all this working stuff um, I don't need anymore. So we got the top and bottom waffle pattern, and then our guy. So I'm just going to delete one, two, three. And then now we have a very simple scene, and now we've got our little waffle guy that we can start hammering away at. We'll figure out how that's gonna work. Now, problematic part. 
this up here, I rotated it, but I didn't hold down shift to snap it to an increment. So I might have to just eyeball it. So I'm gonna alt tap here. We're gonna duplicate this. Again, we're going to mirror this in the Y direction. And we'll go ahead and let's go into solo mode here. Because if I have this here, I'm going to set the pivot. Oop, hold on, alt to set the pivot. Again, this is so gross, but bear with me. And it's kind of, it's, I hate eyeballing this stuff, but order of operations is important. If I do a waffle iron tutorial, I'll make sure I do this in the right order because eyeballing it again is suboptimal. Okay, so we have a shift here and then we have our lid is way up here. So we'll just, uh, I'm gonna eyeball it, sorry. Uh, but, oh well. So I'm gonna go through here, I'm gonna alt paint in the middle here. And again, you know, we got the thickness generally, but we're not gonna really see this. I was gonna say what you could do is you can get rid of all this on the bottom and then just extrude everything in and get your thickness that way. But I think what I might do is we'll do Q mesh polygroup ball. I'm gonna push this down. I want it to get, oh, I don't wanna hold down shift. I just wanna literally Q mesh this up. About here-ish. And then maybe I'm gonna pull it in just a slight bit. So if I hold down, if I alt tap here and then just uh, control tap, here, um, I can kind of swing, pull this in just a tiny bit. You could dome it out if you want to, but I'm just looking for a, a cavity for it. So we'll do a crease PG, we'll hit D for dynamic. Uh, we'll make sure this doesn't look too terrible. Again, I apologize for having to eyeball this, but I wasn't thinking. Okay, and then this can kind of, I think it sits flush, maybe a little embedded in here. And if we need to move the back part down, we can do that but something like that, eh, good enough. So now, turn everything else back on. We've got the top, we've got the bottom, we've got the waffle body. We've got our block out, rocking and rolling. So now here's another boring part, unfortunately. Um, what's the best way to do this? Let's append a cube. And with this cube, we'll turn on polyframe, we'll hit W, and we're gonna scale this down, we're gonna scale this in, we're gonna scale it like this. We're gonna hit W and mooch, scooch it over. Geometry modified topology, mirror and weld across the X. Turn off local symmetry because we wanna do it across the world this time. There we go. X symmetry back on. Um, now I have X symmetry on, so if I go in here to zero measure, oops. If I just do zero measure, it's just gonna do whatever. I wanna do depth size down to zero, nice even quads, target pulling on count, um, half, detect edges, zero mesh. And then I'll go ahead and simplify my geometry. I always do a quick mirror and weld, but it's mirrored with symmetry, so we're fine. Uh, so we have our basic uh, shape here. So now I'm gonna go through here and we'll just kind of match up these handles. I guess we're, we're pretty close here. So here's our handle. It goes from kind of close to the bottom to as it starts to turn here. So I'm gonna scale this down just a bit. So something like there and then it tapers as well. Um, you can use, well, it, talking like you can actually look at this. So it does, it goes out, it, out one and then down kind of tapers and it also looks like it kind of tapers in, in that direction too. So what I'm gonna do is model that. So we'll go through here. Uh, again, we can just, we can do another uh, zero mesh half with detect edges, it'll do the same thing. Um, in fact, let's see if we can't just keep hitting half because I don't need that much geo. So there it goes out one and then insert single edge loop. We'll go ahead and hold down alt. We'll get rid of this one and that one. So a nice simplified shape. Uh, let's go into solo mode. Yeah, that works. I uh, didn't even have to think too hard. And you know what, we'll get rid of all this too. So instead of using a bunch of taper stuff, we can literally just, um, we can work this way. So now we're working across X axis. Let's go ahead and turn on uh, transform Z axis and we'll do a quick transform uh, geometry modified topology mirror and weld in the X and Z with L sim turned on and that will give us symmetry let's go ahead and increase all okay so now I can go through here I can do a slide edge and we'll say we'll slide God, you know what we should probably even let's go nuts let go us 
crazy. <laughs> uh, X, Y, and Z, transform, X, Y, and Z, geometry mod file, the mirror and weld, blah, 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 um, slide edge. So we're gonna say slide this over. Of course, if you wanna match our reference, we can put this back in. Uh, position is fine, I believe-ish. Um, so again, if we wanna slide this in and we wanna slide this down a bit, I think that's kind of what the shape looks like to me. And if we want to, we could even do like a transpose edge loop complete. If we can transpose this entire line and then we can even just move this entire line up just a little bit. Okay, good enough. Um, that still looks a little bit thicker here. So if I was doing this for production reasons, um, and let's go ahead and transform, we'll turn off just, uh, just X symmetry again. If I was doing this for production, I would massage this a little bit more to make sure that, because I think this isn't quite as deep as it should be. Um, I'm struggling to care, but I'm just, I am gonna care a little bit. Uh, let's say Alt tap here. We'll push that down just a tad. Yeah, a tad more. Doubles in the details, right? So, solo mode here. That would give us a little more breathing room. And now we can, you know, kind of thicken this up just a bit too to match a little bit better. Okay. Uh, we have side handles here, and let's turn on perspective, and I'm going to just kind of fudge this back, and we'll see if I need to... Don't reset your gizmo if you're in... Um, yeah, I'm having a hard time with the shape. It's easier to sculpt a mech gorilla than it is to make a handle on a garbage pill kid's waffle iron. Okay, so we got this, we got a line. I think we're in good shape. We have an indentation. It's not beautiful, but it's good enough. Um, I could align to the lid, I suppose. There is align tools in here, but um, I'm not sure if that would have worked. So here's some align tools. I think what I'd have to do I'd have to think too hard for that. Um, 2020 this will be final release for perpetual license. Uh, I know you're not max on, and I won't hold you to your answer. That's exactly right. I have no clue. <laughs> I'm not sure. No idea. Uh, snapping the feature, everyone wants. Yes, that that I would agree with that. That'd be a nice feature. Um, yeah, Birdie, how's it going, man? Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, garbage. I mean, I don't know why. I have a list of things I'm supposed to do. I was going to do like a coat of arms or a, oh, what was the other thing? I had, a, had a, one of my coworkers, he had some really good ideas. Um, but then I was always going researching like what I would want to do. They were just a lot of work. So this is a little bit less work um, that I can do in uh, just one sitting. Because I honestly, it's I'm just not good enough at thinking through the live, thinking through the order of operations to get something like that done sometimes. So um Typically hollow underneath, and then maybe you know if these wipe clean. Yeah, so this is, you're right. So underneath here, uh, you could go through here and you could like hold down Alt. So, it, you know, for example, uh, we go through here and we say inset polygroup wall. And I will say, I think I do most of the kitchen cleaning. You can go through like that. I think that's a nice little, you know, nice little lip if you wanted to do that. Um, there we go. So now, uh, we got that one. Oh, so we need a front one on here. So let's go ahead and duplicate this off. And I'm going to go out of X symmetry. We'll go to unmatch mesh center. We'll hold down shift, rotate this 90 degrees. Uh, we don't need the back one. So control shift alt, geometry modified topology, delete hidden W. Um, that's off axis. Delete. Reset orientation. Unmatch mesh center, duplicate, <laughs> shift, 90 degrees, nine, come on, shift, 90, Q, shift, control shift, alt, delete hidden, W. Um, oh, you know what I'm gonna have to do? 
alt tap this one and eyeball it yoink so now this one meets at the lip again we'll take a quick look it's at the lip a little bit thinner than the others generally goes there now if this does have to fit you know it's molded to it or if it indents into the metal we'll figure that in a second but generally speaking that's where that could go in fact i'm going to say alt tap right here just to set that pivot and we'll set it just a little bit like that so now as i go through here i can kind of finagle this into place so let's shift snap back here uh, we can turn on perspective we can kind of match our lid a little lead a little and we'll pull this back oh boy oh boy oh yeah it's at a more more drastic angle here doesn't anybody love when i do z brush and i have to sit here and match something isn't it so exciting um a little bit thinner And it's not the exact same shape, but I think I'm going to keep it just because, again, struggling to care. Shift-Z, um, W, Alt-Tap, and let's Alt-Tap this one here. Something about that when I got it at the right angle was bothering me. Yeah, a little thicker. There we go. Okay. L sim. Okay, I think we're in good shape. Um, now on these ones, what we could do is uh, these corners here, you could go through here and say, you know, crease PG, crease level of two, smooth subdiv of three, and just kind of knock that back a little bit. Uh, another alternative, you know what? They do kind of bend to match. Um, Shifty, let's go through here. Let's do a bevel, edge of complete. And let's do another, um, oops, mirroring weld, X, L, sim, X, Y, and Z, X, bevel, mirroring weld. There we go. Um, you know what? I'm not going to mess with that. Weld points, distance closed up. Okay. Uh, group by normals. Judge, modify the body, mirroring weld. So, L, sim, off, mirroring weld. That's close though. Hmm, yeah, forget that. Okay, LSIM on. Okay, we have this, and what we want to do is bow this out a little bit. So I'm just going to take these corners back and just scoot them back just a bit. And then maybe take these ones too and scoot them back just a tiny bit here. Oops. All right, so now. Again, if I wanted to, crease PG to crease my polygroups, uh, crease level of like one or two, depending on you know how drastic you want that smooth fall off to be. However, you can also go through here and we could say, uh, we'll do smooth subdiv of one, uncrease all, and then we'll go in here to Q grid and we can dial in a chamfer and change your coverage. And you can change uh, that radius there, which I think might kind of work for this dial that coverage back a little so this kind of eases those corners off um okay solo mode polyframe water uh we got the boring stuff done yet let's take a look and oh, we got some more boring stuff so whatever this little pedal is back here and these little knobs on the foot uh let's do this so alt tap here we we started uh on the world act oops um I'm gonna do a quick uh, mirror across the X, mirror and weld across the X, X symmetry. There we go. Um, go in here to X symmetry back on. Alt B M. Because didn't we just make a cylinder here? Yeah, we just made an insert cylinder. So if you look back to the video, we'll go to that insert mesh here, and we're gonna turn on transform in the X and Z, and we're just gonna put in little feet here, and we're gonna say split mass points, Shift D, and We'll get as fancy with these as you want to. Uh, looks like they maybe come down and they're like little suction cup, little feet kind of things. So first we'll make sure they're positioned okay. So we hit W, we'll kind of, eh, let's maybe turn on perspective here. 
this. Now it's got to be irritating to watch, but bear with me. Um, here, yeah. So kind of underneath, we'll go ahead and say, um, let's do run a crease tolerance here. Turn on dynamic. Fit this just in just a little bit more. Okay, so how fancy do you want to get with these feet? Uh, let's say semi-fancy. So again, they're suction cups, right? So they're going to be stuck here, and maybe there's an indentation on the lip. So let's go through here, and let's do a scale. Edge loop complete, and we'll scale this in a little bit. Yeah, you know what? Let's let's give ourselves... Uh, let's do shifty. So, insert single edge loop. We'll put a little holder here, because that's going to be a little round area. And you know what? I'm going to over crank the thickness more than I think I need to, because I'm right up on it. And then uh, through here, we want this to kind of cup back. So we're going to say scale. I know I'm just using words that probably don't make a lot of sense, but bear with me. So this, and then we're going to go through here. And we can say, you know what? We'll do another insert single edge loop here. And you know, we'll scale this back too. So we'll scale. So we're just using a little bit of scale here. And then now we'll go back, insert single uh, multiple edge loops, interactive elevation. We can pull out on this one, round it out. And then even on this one too, we could even bulge this little disc uh, here if we wanted to. Um, or it might even be better, inset, inset polygroup island. Well, inset just, uh, this bottom part needs to be its own polygroup. There we go. Inset polygroup island here. And then we'll say uh, Q mesh polygroup ball, hold down shift. There we go. All right, all right. Now let's set a little bit of creasing on here. So we're gonna do a quick, um, Group by normals, urine weld. Yep, okay, that'll work. And we want these to all be part of the same one, so you know what? Group by normals doesn't, yeah, whatever. Polygroup, polyloop. We're gonna say you, you, and you need to be part of the same polygroup. All of you, this one needs to be different, that one needs to be different, that one needs to be different. So now if we uncrease all, Josh, what about urine weld and the X and Z? Make sure they're all the same. Um, crease PG dynamic, something like that. So we got our little waffle feet. What else we need? Uh, we got that little back pedal, whatever that is. Um, I'm just gonna do this one real quick. So Alt tap on here. I'm just gonna grab a cube. And we're just gonna slap it. Right here, we're going to say split mass points, shift D. I only need one, so we're going to turn off X symmetry. Grab this, geometry modified topology, delete hidden, W, scale it down, scale it in, push, maybe rotate. And then we're playing it fast and loose. Oops, um, get out of that mode so we can snap back with my camera. You know, I'm gonna save another dot. Movie time, movie timeline show, and this will be my perspective camera on. So now this comes out like so. Boy, that's small. I thought here, over, shrink, in, down, something like that, right? And then on the end here, let me think about this. Uh, this needs to bow out a little bit. Also, probably needs to be a little bit thinner. So here, and then this rounds. So let's uh, let's just do an insert. Multiple edge loops, we can put one right down the middle here. And we'll say transpose uh, uh, um, edge. Yep, move. And then it has a pretty severe uh, bevel on the sides. Let me think about that. Here's what we can do. We can do a group by normals. And then we could even try going in here to edge loop. So geometry, edge loop, there's a crease. You can hold down control, it'll put bevels along your polygroups there. Uh, that's generally what I want, but I, I don't need the top beveled. So let me think about this some more. Let's make these all one polygroup here. Oops. Like so. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm gonna do a quick inset 
polygroup. I don't know why this is so weird for my brain right now. Um, you know what? We'll do the whole ring. There we go. Here, we'll pull this in a little bit. And then we'll just scale this down. So control tap. Eh, let's put another edge loop, another edge loop in here. Uh, you know what? Let's do this. Let's hold down shift to straighten it out. W, control tap this. Uh, we'll reset it and we'll scale it down and we'll scale it back. Oh, I don't know why that was a pain. Increase PG, dynamic. Um, and you know what? We'll mix this up too. We can even grab this whole back end and then we can just say crease. Whatever our open edges are, we'll crease. So now we've got kind of this. That's kind of the shape it is. In fact, if we wanted to control that fall off a little bit more, we could insert a single edge loop. So when we have D turned on for dynamic, as we pull an edge loop here, it'll kind of fix that. Um, I think this is about right. Something like that. <sighs> okay. Um, any more boring stuff? Yeah. Uh, okay, so we got a wall. We got kind of an environment that it lives in. That, that should go fairly quick. So I'm gonna go here, we're gonna append a plane 3D again. We're gonna go down here to this. Shift 90 degrees for the floor. Move it down. And hell, we could even, let's turn on perspective. Uh, I'm, I, what I really don't wanna do is do this, but I'm gonna do it anyway. So we're gonna kinda here is our so first let's make sure obviously the floor needs to be lined up uh, if you want to keep it a plane you can you can go to here to geometry uh, dynamic and you can say dynamic on we don't need any smoothness but we do want thickness so as we add thickness here it's just a dynamic thickness so we can turn that on and off as needed you can do your class in blah 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 uh, however I do want to do an offset, so basically um, offset of 100, so the, nope, offset of negative 100, so the dynamic part is just going down from the actual geometry, so when I move this up, now I know the top is my real geometry. Good enough, so now, let's see, does that generally fit my view here? Okay. We got this, and in fact, if we turn on LSIM, if we go through here and we can reconstruct subdivisions, we can knock this down. Let's go ahead and say delete higher. And now we have kind of the number of tiles we would want if we wanted to model those tiles in ZBrush, um, which we may do, why not? And then for the wall, same deal. Um, let's hit W, let's Alt tap here, and let's hold down Shit, let's duplicate it off. Rotate it 90 up. Now this one, if we do offset here, we could do offset negative 100. The real geometry is gonna be on the back, but if we convert this, we can just grab that plane. Good enough. Okay, so now that we have a surface back here, we can go ahead and we'll work our way back along that cord. So, um, you know what, let's do this. I'm gonna duplicate this off, go into solo mode. Your solo mode may be down here somewhere. I'm gonna dynamic apply, and now I can literally, literally insert single edge loop right here. Uh, I can even slide this over. Slide, edge loop complete, slide, and then, uh, yeah, we'll slide this one right about here. So this little section right here, we'll hold down Alt and tap it. That is our outlet. So we'll say Control Shift Drag, Judge Modify Topology, Delete Hidden. Um, control W. Let's do an Auto Groups. Control Shift Tap. Just this one. Delete Hidden. There we go. So now we have our outlet. We'll do a. Um, my, my heart wants to do an inset right now, but what I'm going to do instead is we'll go through here. We'll say Q Mesh Polygroup All. Well done. Just kind of Q Mesh this out just a bit. I'm gonna do an inset polygroup all, each poly legacy, and we'll pull this in how much? Uh, yay much. And then we'll do a Q mesh polygroup all, hold on shift, and we'll pull that out. 
So that'll be the beginning of our outlet. Uh, should I Boolean that? I think I should. Yeah. Anyway, okay. Okay, um, again, if I miss something, I apologize. Um, you know, uh, struggling with Kara's my nickname in high school. <laughs> Mine too, up until, for some reason, I started trying harder, like, junior or senior year. I was like, hey, I can actually, oh, you know what, I should study. Uh, how to maintain plug out of my meshes? 10 million using Dynamesh, I was using Sculpture, so I want to keep my small details I've already sculpted. Um, you can try, I'm not going to say this is going to work every time, but you can try going in here to Z plugin. You might have to download and install this um, from their website, Pixelogic Downloads, Z plugins. Uh, Dynamesh Utility, you can actually type in, choose, here's 10 million polygons. Um, you may need to go in here to additional options and do an auto scaler. That may or may not work though. Oh, oh, another thing too, if you need a lot of geometry, so for example, if you wanted to Dynamesh this, Hit the solo button. Um, if we wanted to dynamesh this, uh, and we say, okay, resolution 128 with close circle, blur down, we dynamesh it, it's going to give us uh, 21,000 points. Uh, however, we can also go in here. Is if I just turn on this little open circle here and dynamesh this, um, same deal. However, I think when you get into the, <laughs> just made a liar out of me. Um, turn this to open circle if it's capping your resolution. This will allow you to do higher resolution dynameshes. FYI. Uh, that's kind of a buried thing. No problem. Yes. Uh, you know how to make a clean uh, <laughs> uh, clean room crevice around the panel instead of a mesh like a lid hatch. Um, you could use panel loops. Uh, depending on how your geometry is set up, maybe give panel loops a shot right here underneath your edge loops. Uh, but yeah, I'd have to see. Um, <laughs> yeah, power plug. Yeah, so the power plug from the... Yeah, so the power plug, the cable, the prongs, the little plastic thing on the back. Yeah, we've got a bit of work to left to do. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, the organic stuff is really cool and fun to do in ZBrush. Um, that's why I think a lot of people do it. I do too. Um, but hard surface on like honestly goes faster for me, depending on what I'm making. Uh, a lot of the, the the sculptural stuff ends up being a lot of like, oh, just watch me use the clay brush for 45 straight minutes. And um, I mean, maybe you guys would love that, but I don't know. I doubt it. So anyway, we gotta go back here. Let us hold on. And we have our thing back here. So let's think about this. Uh, how do I want to do this? Well, I can duplicate this off. I'm going to go back into solo mode. We're going to say insert single edge loop. And we can mirror this, but essentially I'm just going to go through here real quick. You know what? Let's do a quick uh, LSIM turned on, geometry modified topology, mirror and weld across the X axis. Ah, oh, we can't because it's on a slightly bent plane. This is what I was worried about. Uh, now, before I get too far down this, yeah, you know what? I can always rotate it back. Who cares? Uh, okay, so here. And here is about where that's going to go. Uh, of course, if I want to, I can say you need to slide out in this direction. So that's the overall shape that I want to have, and it'll be a nice fall off on that one. And then we'll duplicate that up. We'll go ahead and drop in a screw on here. So if I go BI brush insert industrial parts M, that looks like a flat. So we'll just go through here and we'll just kind of pop that right in there, and then we'll scale it down just a bit uh, and then we'll mirror this up and I think we'll be in good shape oops uh, and we'll go ahead and say split mass points so that that little nubbin that little screw is on its own thing so here's our duplicate I think so now let me figure this out because I could boolean it um, <clears throat> It's such a simple, simple shape. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Let's just do that. So also number two. Let me make sure this is. Ah, this is getting so gross. Um, not working on an axis. 
yuck, yucky. Okay, so alt here. Um, I'm gonna grab just this geometry modified by delete hidden auto groups. Grab this one, delete hidden. Q mesh polygroup all. I'm going to go ahead and say crease edge. It's weird working on not on an axis. It feels like I'm I have perspective turned on. Uh, we'll do a crease PG D for dynamic. Ugh, uh, that inherited the thickness thing that I don't want. Um, but we can turn on smooth subdiv now, and this is generally, I think, a little bit too. That's so weird. Not wide enough. Okay, so we've got our basic shape here, and then we've got our little outlet here. So, that's so weird. Uh, I'm gonna take this. You know what? We're gonna we're gonna do this. I think this will work. Then Alt, and I'm gonna give these all different polygroups here. Everybody, wish me luck. Actually, let's do this. Let's do group by normals, max angle way down, so that basically every face gets its own polygroup. And then this one here, I'm going to go into solo mode. We're going to say you get its own polygroup and you get its own polygroup. There we go. We'll hit W. We'll scale this out here and we're going to punch this in and we're going to say subtractive and we're going to say get rid of this one. And then, then uh, you know what? I'm just going to eyeball this one. Good enough. So I'm going to say. And you know what? I'm going to alt tap this one too. We're going to turn on dynamic for this, but we're going to say crease all. We're going to say smooth subdiv up to two, thickness down to zero, crease all. Just so I have more points, just in case Boolean does something weird. So we're going to say Boolean dynamics doesn't even make Boolean mesh. I'm going to go hop out of here real quick. We'll do a quick save. Went here to polyframe. Um, we'll say zero mesh half, that size down to zero. Keep groups, move groups down to zero. Yeah, that works. Zero mesh is fine, and that'll be a good start. So if we go through here, we'll crease PG, and now we can do like crease level of two, smooth set of a three, give it a nice little fall off, and that'll be our like our wall outlet. Now, now, append our U mesh here. Now we do still have these little plugins that we can use to our advantage for our um, our little prong things, right? So first things first, we don't need this plane anymore, this working plane, so we'll go ahead and delete that out of our scene. And this is where my brain really needs to start working because I'm just looking at a bunch of unnamed crap. That looks like a wall. Uh, here we go. So I just want to see these two here. We'll turn off that. Uh, we'll turn that so it's not subtractive anymore. So now we have our little inset little guys. Um, so now we can go through here. We can say, uh, let's hold down Alt and paint these a different color. And then now, Q mesh, polygroup all. Hold down Shift and we'll just push that along the surface normal. Same thing here, just Shift, push it along the surface normal. And then if we want to embed these a little bit, let's make these all the same polygroup. So if we hold down Alt and hold down, sh what is it? Alt, start painting, let go, tap Shift. <laughs> That'll inherit those polygroups there. So now I can squeeze this in a little bit. So we'll say Q mesh polygon ball, hold down. There, yep. Ooh, uh, ooh, uh. Okay. And if we need to also, uh, we could just say uh, squeeze. Okay. Oh boy. Okay, crease PG. Now we'll do another crease level of two, smooth subdiv of three. Hmm. Crease level of three, smooth subdiv of four. I probably need some control loops in there, but again, I'm struggling to care about that. Uh, we could even add a little bevel in there. We'll get there. Let me think. And we can move we can move this geometry around if we need to. Um, the other thing too is the this bottom one's gonna have uh, it's gonna be the prongs are be covered up. This one is not. So unfortunately, we are gonna have to do some fancy footwork. So we'll go in here and we'll say um, insert multiple edge loops, keep polygroup, interact, specified elevation set to zero. So we just put one line right down the middle. Um, 
Although, you know what? Looks like I'm going to... Oh, this is going to be... This is so messy. I'm sorry. Shift. Um, let me see here. Shift. Nope. Shift off. Put one right down the middle-ish. I'm just going to duplicate this down. So let's figure this out. Um, okay. So we have this. I'm going to go through here. We're going to say bevel, edge loop complete. Shift D to turn that off. Um, transpose, edge loop complete here. And we will literally Z scale this. This is so gross. <laughs> kind of like it. Uh, kind of like it, but it's gross. Sorry. Everybody, all you hard surface modelers out there, I apologize. Bevel again. We could do another, we could do another Boolean, but you know, so we beveled once, we can just tap the bevel again. Um, in this case, if we bevel again, uh, we'll have to round that out, but that's okay. Uh, but we don't need to bevel in that direction. What we do need to do is we need to figure out, insert single edge loop, we need to put one here and one here. And I think in the United States, I'm assuming that's where garbage pail kids are from. That looks vaguely American. Uh, we'll say US wall outlet images. Yeah. So bigger on one side, smaller on the other side. That's about what I was thinking. So we'll say you and you can be pulled through. So we're going to say Q mesh, probably your ball. We'll just pull those through. And uh, we'll shrink this one down. So, so control alt W, we'll scale here, something like this. And I might even just, it might vaguely work. So again, we'll do another uh, group by normals. Again, I'm going to need some more points in here to make that smooth nicely, but we'll see if this just uh, doesn't work. So increase all, increase PG. Um, yeah, I think we need to massage some of this, but that's okay. So we'll scale in just a bit. And then for these points here, let's go ahead and set to round that out. And then this is where, you know what, looking back, I should have uh, probably used Booleans because we could just knock it out, let Ziri Mesher do the heavy lifting. Uh, even on vaguely simple objects, it can just be more trouble than it's worth trying to figure out like, oh, let me massage these stupid verts into place. Um, and again, that it's you can do it better. Order of operations will save you some headaches, but if you're just doing it live and you're not really using your brain too good, um, it can be problematic. So uh, we got this. This looks a little big to me. Uh, in fact, if we want to, I don't want to mess it up. I'm just going to kind of eyeball it, but you can bring in another image. You know what? We can do that. Let's see. Save image as. Yeah, why not? Texture import. Because I don't think it'll move the reference here. We'll grab this one. Texture, add it to our spotlight. We'll just move this out of the way here. So now I can use this to kind of double check my work here and you know the proportions of what these need to be in fact let's go back into Z let's scale this up so now I know if I go to unmesh mesh center we need to find that axis there first now we can go okay you need to be about here Thank you. And then you need to be about, let's move that out of the way. Here. It's a little bit better. W, Alt Tap, Control Drag. And I may end up remodeling these just because working off axis and kind of half ass in it is not great, but I think it'll get the job done. So uh, this one here, so if we hit Z, uh, we'll go back here. We don't need this reference anymore, so we just exit out of there. And now we have wall plug. We can pull those corners in, not a huge deal. Um, but while I'm thinking about it, 
let's go ahead and go to my custom brush here and we'll say cube and then right over these prongs we're gonna go oh it's a circle that's all right we'll say split mass points that's under your subtool split menu and this will be our little shift D to turn off dynamic our little uh, electric thing so here is where it is make sure it's generally the right size ish um, You know, I'll put another dot in here for this one. So here, scale it down just a bit. That's about right. And now I'm just going to eyeball a little bit. So Control Alt W will scale, will taper it in just a bit. And in fact, it kind of looks like if we go in here, insert multiple edge loops, key poly group, interactive elevation, kind of bows out just a little bit here. Nice. And then uh, you know what? Kind of around the middle, kind of bows out a little bit too. And if we want to flatten this off, we can we say Control Alt W, Alt Tap here, Gross Z Scale, Gross Rotate. <laughs> That's okay. And then uh, we're good to go. So there's kind of the plug here. Yes, be a little thicker. Now, how do we get this right here? I'm going to use Z Spheres. Append Z Sphere. Uh, select it. E E scale W move not even close that's okay we'll figure it out so here you know what change my mind don't want that one don't want that one drag them out so now uh, again the this the sky scale the scale doesn't really matter um, I don't think we can always we can make that if you fact if you go in here to transform Nope, stroke, there is a curves helper and you can uh, scale z-spheres to draw size. It'll scale all your z-spheres, so don't worry too much about that. So now I'm gonna turn off these walls because they're pissing me off. And we have this, we have our z-sphere selected. Uh, live Boolean turn off. Um, snap our camera back. Yeah, that perspective is wreaking havoc on my scene. Oh. Okay, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna just do this. Q, uh, as you drag off a z-sphere, hold down shift, that'll snap it to the same size again. Not imperative that that happens. Make your draw size very small, so you're only affecting one z-sphere at a time. And we're gonna say, where does the z-sphere end up? Somewhere behind this handle, right? So let's go ahead and make sure that this is generally where we want it here. And then uh, now I'm gonna go through here. I'm just gonna kind of quickly, I'm hitting Q to draw and then W to move. And we're just going to kind of eyeball it first. So when it comes out of the socket, it's going to be like, it'll come out kind of straightish, maybe pull to the left. And then something like that. So now if we snap this back to our view here. And again, I'm really more concerned about the waffle than that wall relationship. So W. through here Oops. let's make sure yeah I want to leave that one alone so Q these what this one needs a lot more so W it's gonna move these into place here and then Q W Q W Q W now this is interesting because it has a spiral down so we may have to use an IMM rope type thing or like a braided rope, or we may have to, like twisting, Ooh, twisting might be weird. Okay, so that's generally where the cord needs to go. That makes sense, everybody? Yeah, I think that'll work. We'll figure this out. Um, the other thing too is to make sure that it makes sense in, uh, you know, it, this doesn't really make sense in how this cord would kind of work. It would kind of probably sag through here So we'll make that look vaguely correct first, and then we'll go back through and reposition if we need to. 
If you ever need to delete any of these, you can just hold down Alt, oops, Q, Alt, get rid of them, and reposition them. You can move down the chain. These spheres are very useful. Something like this, I think, would be a little more appropriate. You could also use dynamics for this if you wanted to, like have it drape a chord, but it has to kind of match. And is that supposed to be touching the floor? Because that would actually make more sense too. Um, we'll leave it for now. Good enough. All right. Okay, we might be on to maybe some goo or maybe cleaning this up or maybe popping some eyeballs on there. Um, you know what, we'll make this, we'll make this uh, realistic. <laughs> that should be real gross. So let's go in here, I'm gonna grab some, let's see, scan. Facts, no, we want, we do want that. Neutral Z tool. I'm gonna bring in some 1024 scan data and we're gonna steal the eyeballs. Um, let me see. Oh yeah, you could do snapshot 3D uh, for the outlet for sure. That'd be a good one. Um, <laughs> yes. Um, you a care jar, that sounds, that sounds pleasant. So, we got our garbage pail concept. Uh, that's where this is from. So if you're not as old as me, um, let's see, let's take this eyeball. I'm just gonna steal one eyeball here and then the lens we can recreate, no problem. So I'm gonna say, you know what? I'm gonna say delete other. All we want is this eyeball. And then we're gonna go into our scene and we're going to append this eyeball. Um, I'm just gonna unify it. Oops, not that. I want to unify the eyeball. Uh, deformation, geometry, no, tool deformation unify is where you want to find that. And that'll just kind of generally put this in my scene. So I'm going to turn off polyframe here and we'll rotate it around a mesh mesh center. And we'll kind of just position this here. So all I really need to look at now is my eyeball and my waffle man. So we'll put that down here on. And then eyeball here, let's position this. So eyeball needs to go here, scale down, not that much, move into place and somewhere in that area. And he's kind of looking at camera, so we'll, <laughs> some, I will say some, I, like I said, some of the garbage pail stuff's a little problematic, uh, but oh my God, one, one, one made me laugh, like literally laugh out loud. Um, the names are so dumb, but I love them. Oh, it was, a, it was a building and it was in the shape of a, you know, fat little toddler. And his name was Bill Ding. And of course he's getting like a wrecking thing, wrecking ball bashed into him and stuff. So he's you know you know the usual and uh for some reason that just that just tickled me uh for some reason because i'm juvenile as hell i guess okay so eyeball is in here now let's duplicate this eyeball i'm going to scooch it over and we're going to take a look at these here because yeah they're kind of looking at us uh, but I do want these to be part of the same subtool, I believe. So I'm going to take this one. These do have UVs and textures, so I want to make sure I go into and I merge. I want to keep my UVs and then merge down. Okay. Good, good, good. So there we go. Let's go to Unmatch Mesh Center. And then if I need to rotate them down, I can rotate them on the same axis, I believe. However, rotating them left is going to be a little bit trickier. So that means I need to turn on X symmetry, L sim turned on, symmetry in the Z. So now if I go to unmatch mesh center and I rotate, they'll rotate on their own axis. No, I need to do a quick mirror and weld across the Z. And then can they rotate? No. Okay, I lied. Control Alt here. 
go to unmesh mesh center and I'm going to rotate these individually. There's a lot of things when I live stream where I'm like, man, I wish, I wish I had thought about doing this in the right order because it makes all the difference in the world. Okay, now for these, let's go into, eh, it already has a texture map, that's fine. That's fine, we got eyeballs in there. Now, uh, we got that, we got the cord. Ugh. Let's figure out how that cord's gonna work. So, we have a cord here, we got the Z-Sphere selected. It's generally cord-like. I'm going to turn off perspective and we're gonna turn off, I'm gonna put the walls and stuff, I'm gonna merge those into one sub-tool. I'm going to shoot it down to the bottom and turn them off. Now, this cord. Alt-tap this cord so we can select the Z-spheres. If I hit A, that's going to turn it into an adaptive skin. The solo mode so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, kind of a weird color, but okay. We're going to go down here to adaptive skin. If I turn on polyframe, you're going to see it's just a Dynamesh. Not what I want. Um, so Dynamesh resolution down to zero. With Z-sphere selected, you have an adaptive skin thing here. Um, so A to go on depth skin. Yes, A, there we go. So now density down to one. So now we just have a nice simple tube. Um, you can use this path to drive an IMM, which we may need to do, or you can just turn this into geometry and finagle it. Uh, you can put a texture uh, down it. So if you wanted to just run a texture down this, totally fine too. We'll try and model it. So let's see how this goes. Uh, control W, make it all one poly group. Control Shift, we'll grab a select lasso. Alt, geometry modified topology. Oh, oh, hold on, this is this will get you. We have an adaptive skin preview, and it'll let you model, insert mesh, dynamesh. It'll let you do whatever you want to this geometry because it's just geometry, but it's a preview geometry. Make adaptive skin. That'll put the actual geometry out here in its own tool sitting there. Insert. Skin Z-Sphere, we can turn off our Z-Sphere. You can delete it if you don't need it anymore. So now we have actual geometry here. So now uh, we'll go through here, hold on, Control Shift, Alt, Control Shift, Alt, Geometry Modified Topology, Delete Hidden, Control W, make it all one poly group. Um, if I want to smooth this out a little bit, I can go into uh, Polish by Features, Deformation, Tool, Deformation, Polish by Features, Open Circle, tap that a bunch of times, and then go to Deformation, Inflate, and we'll inflate it back up. That'll kind of smooth it out. Now, let's think about this. Um, first, let's inflate it a little bit more. So we're back where we started. Um, we have nice even geometry. We can go through here, zero mesh or half, depth size down to zero, and we can simplify this geometry down um, if we want. Again, it's just a tube is basically what we're looking at. If we wanted to like put an IMM path down here, uh, and you could, you know, it go through here and say um, move brush and move the stuff around and finagle this however you'd like. Uh, however, if you want to say, okay, I want to put an IMM curve down this path, we can go through here and we can say poly group, poly loop. So tap here, tap here, um, and just alt tapping to change the color. So control shift tap between them, geometry modified topology, delete hidden. Now you have a frameable uh, curve. Let's go ahead and turn on display properties double. Uh, display properties is way down here at the bottom. So now, stroke, curve functions. We could take our polygroups here, frame mesh. So we'll put a curve right down here. So now if we go in here to BI, um, was there a rope? IMM army curve, M, no, BI brush insert curve, M, there's a coil. I can make a rope real quick. I do, and I have a rope. I've done this before. Look up rope on my um, channel. So we're gonna go in here to uh, just our weirdo IMM brushes here, and we're gonna see if we can't just do a, uh, here's a rope tighter that might work. So we select this brush here. It's a curved brush. So if I just tap this uh, here, we'll just adjust the size. Tap to update. So now we have kind of a coiled thing. And if we want to make that embed a little better, we can say, take this embed down to zero. So when we tap it, I'll go right down the middle here. Um, so that's one way you could have like a coiled thing. Now that's not exactly what this is. Let's try something else. 
And this may not work. I may have to just resort to using a texture. Luckily, I have a ton of undos. So let's do this. Let's uh, isolate just this one. Delete hidden. Let's go into dynamic. Turn off smooth. Go in here to micro poly. And we have some ropes in here. We have some wires. So if I just grab this wire, you'll see it'll, this is a double wire. It'll pass like a coiled wire down here. And this is just instances attached to geometry. So every face inherits this mesh. And uh, again, if you want to rotate them, you can rotate these around if you want, but this is generally fine. You can scale, um, I think scale of one is what we want. You can make them bigger or smaller, um, align if you need to. Um, but again, it's just a coiled rope. It's not, I'm just gonna, you know what? I'm gonna stick with the cord. There are a couple different ways. If you, if those will work for you, go for it. If not, sorry for wasting your time, but I'm only wasting my own time in that case. So I'll be okay. Floor off, polyframe off. Why is this? Oh, turn off that. Okay, I think we've got our scene generally set up. We can, uh, we'll go in and do some goo. We'll do some sculpting. We got about 30 minutes left. That sounds like a plan. Um, yeah, so what I, so, oh, so if you got, I don't know if you all follow him. Um, for the Instagram. So if I want to, <laughs> uh give me a sec so uh this guy cracks me up uh patrick 4d uh, does these amazing models uh, z brush models and then he renders them in cinema 4d and it's just like nuts so so you know i don't have i don't have cinema 4d on this computer it's on my other computer that's getting built right now um waiting on ram so i wonder um we could do something like that like a like a hyper real just like go go nuts on the materials and rendering and the tile on the back and then have it like a hyper real little waffle kid. I don't know if I'm capable of that necessarily, um, but we could we could give it a shot. So, okay, now let's start modifying this a bit. Since we've got everything generally blocked out, something about this is bothering me. Um, oh, you know why? Because we used, uh, I think we put in, we have Q grid on here. It's capturing all of the all of the geometry so i'm going to go in here smooth so divo three crease level eh, crease level of three smooth so divo four crease pg and i'm going to crease level of two something like that okay so now um you know what we still got some more block out stuff to do the goo um easy way to make goo uh, i'd like to use z spheres but just to kind of get the general goo splat. I'm gonna go in here, we're gonna hit, um, just grab a sphere. So for you all, BI, brush, insert, I'm in primitives, grab a sphere, and we'll just drag that right on here, and we'll say split mass points, and this is immediately, if you want, just go right in here and say, you know what, Dynamesh, who cares? Who cares? Was he brushing it? We'll put this back, and then now we have just a little Dynamesh little blobby uh, hanging out so kind of towards the middle maybe so now uh, B S H okay yeah so we can turn on sculptors pro so as we go through and we kind of pull out um, it'll allow us to kind of test light the geometry on the fly that's what sculptors pro does so it allows you instead of dynameshing you know if we have this off and we pull out it really stresses the geometry you have to redynamesh again uh, in this case sculptors pro right out so now Turn off polyframe. Let's turn, yeah, skin shader four is where we're working. So we have our general blob here, and let's hit Z so I can see a little bit better. And uh, I'll go into move brush. Move brush, you can't use Sculptors Pro, so use um, Snake Hook. And again, I'm, I'm moving it to match the camera, but then immediately you want to hop back out of the camera and make sure that what you're moving makes sense, because what makes sense from one point of view. You know, a life lesson. What makes sense from one point of view may not make sense if you something something inspirational quote. So we got that kind of where we need it to go. Move this back down a little bit. Okay, so uh, B S H Sculptors Pro on goo here. So just grab and pull. Is it not gonna let me? Come on now. 
Oh. Well, that's weird. Hmm. Let me see if brush shouldn't. Oh, turn off spotlight projection. I don't know why it was affecting it so much, but okay. So we're going to grab and we're going to pull. And if you hold down shift and start smoothing and then let go of shift, it'll actually bulb it out, which will be useful for us. And then again, shift to kind of smooth. If you keep shift and smoothing, it'll separate. Uh, if you don't like that, just turn off Sculptors Pro and that won't separate on you. And then we'll go back in here. You can also, instead of sh holding down shift and smoothing and letting go of shift, you can actually go in here to inflate. Just grab your inflate brush. So something like this will be that goo drop. And we're going to say move this goo drop onto the little character. And it looks like it hits him right dead square in the body. So something like this. Now, you can also use these spheres if you were watching. It seems like I did this recently. Oh, yeah. So again, YouTube, you want to look stuff up. Go to the, you want to see all the previous live streams. Go to my playlists here. And it is the Big Blue Genie live stream full episodes. Every oh, live stream I've ever done math. right in here. So here's, hold on. Big Blue Genie, view full playlist. There we go. There's all my live streams. Also, um, here, usually if I end up making something that's not, ah, I can't even say that. I'll sometimes put stuff on here. Uh, so here's the latest one, Baseball Head. There's a couple goodies in there. So this is what we did last month. Um, so here's quick kind of making of, and then here's part one and here's part two. Probably gonna have the same thing for Waffle Guy. Sorry, Waffle Ira. Yeah, I think it actually has two names. Waffle Ira, Waffle Ira, and Griddled Greta. Waffle Ira, Griddled Greta. Names aren't, I don't know. This one, names aren't really uh, making me laugh out loud, but uh, they got some good ones. So anyway, long story short, um, previous live stream stuff on here, plus other goodies if you want. Um, oh, so when we made... This is what I was talking about. When we made our spits here, we actually just went through with Z spheres and then just kind of connected them and then turned it into geometry and smoothed it. So even on this live stream, you have enough information to pull that off. Uh, or, and or, we can uh, also do that here. So if we go through here and we say, okay, I want to use Z spheres just for a little bit more control. Uh, here's our goop. Just kind of sitting in the middle of our stack. We're going to insert the Z sphere here. E, uh, W, E to scale it down. So this little goop is going to be behind this one. Kind of looks like it's on the same-ish plane, but I kind of want to mix it up a little bit. So we'll offset it just a tad. Uh, and then Q, again, doesn't really matter if it's the same size or not. Just make your brush size small so you only pull this one down and it sticks kind of here-ish, right? And then in fact, we can also hit Q and then Q again and then W. And we can say you are another little sticky situation. So we'll put this here-ish. So now we've got plenty of control for making our little spit globs. Again, if we want to say, hey, you know what, these are too big. Just make your brush size smaller, go into stroke, and then say curves helper, uh, scales these spheres to whatever brush size you have, and you're good to go. So scales these spheres brush size. Uh, so that's one of them. I think that'll work good enough. And then even through here, we can just all tap this B S H sculpture. I know sculptures pro turned on and then pull this out. So it's kind of now granted, this is probably going to hang more than like come out. So we'll go through and we'll just kind of put that where it should be inflate good enough. So now, We've done a Z-Sphere version, so I'm going to hit A for Adapt Skin. And in this case, I don't even really need to go in and turn this out of Dynamesh. If you want, though, we know how to do this. Adapt Skin is density down to 1. In fact, you know, density up to 2, but Dynamesh down to 0. Uh, adapt Skin Preview, Make Adapt to Skin. Uh, we'll do an Insert Skin Z-Sphere. Uh, this Z-Sphere we don't need anymore. Just delete it out of our scene. In fact, our original Z-Sphere for our socket we don't need anymore either. So we'll just Z-Sphere, delete it. Uh, while we're working, we'll say save as Waffle Ira 03. Waffle Ira. Is that supposed to be like Waffle Iron? Waffle Ira. 
No, that doesn't quite work. Um, again, I'm not critiquing Garbage Pail Kids. It's fine. Uh, so here, uh, if we do shift, so we have, when we did our subdivisions, it actually brought in more geometry and it control D again, if you want, just keep subdividing. Um, and we hold down shift. First, let's turn off uh, paint. So now as we hold down shift, it'll kind of do the, it'll, sh it'll be big where it's supposed to be big and then shrink and then get big again. If you need to make it bigger, you can go through here with your inflate brush and just kind of inflate it around uh, or do a deformation inflate if you want to inflate the whole thing. So options, options, options. So we'll grab this one here and we'll pull this up here and we'll take this one and we'll goop this out a bit more. Okay, so we've got some good goop going. Uh, we'll inflate this a bit too. And we'll pull down and we'll maybe smooth a bit and we'll maybe inflate. This is where we get into like, you know, finagling our goop. Good enough. Okay, so now other goop. What I'm gonna do, check this out. I'm going to merge visible append merged thing so here's all of my meshes merged together I'm gonna to hit D for dynamic I'm going to go a dynamic apply again just on this merged grossness right here and I'm gonna dynamesh the whole thing now all I really need is like this front part here um, which I can grab so we can say okay what parts do I need uh, I need to steal geometry from here and all I really did that for was the shape I need to steal geometry from here, and I need to steal geometry from here, or making sure that it covers the right parts. Yep, okay, so that's really uh, all I'm looking for here. So in fact, I can go through here and say, you know what, let me get rid of all of this extraneous stuff. I don't need to do that, but why not? Hope I don't break anything doing this, because I'm being play, play, playing it pretty fast and loose. Uh, oops, delete hidden. Change my photo model. Delete hidden. Okay, so we have just a merged modified um, version, but I'm only using that to steal from. So now, extraction time. So we're gonna hold down Control and mask the areas we want extracted, and you can be as exact or not as exact as you want to be, I suppose. But we'll go through here and just kind of mask the general goop direction. Um, you know what, let's turn on perspective and let's make this a little bit more exact. So again, um, I'm going to be, I'm going to be mushing this stuff around. Oh, I don't know why I care so much. It really doesn't matter. Mask, 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 yoink, little drippy. This is all collecting on the in, inner ridge here, so I'll have to keep that in mind. And then uh, off the arm here, a little extra. And here. And this is interesting too. This is like has like a drop shadow. So it makes me think like, maybe it's not a drop shadow. Maybe it is just, uh, we'll do an etching or something on there for those letters. But anyway, oh yeah, and a little, yeah, I do need to match this a little bit better. Leg here. Drip. Now, you could do insert meshes uh, for this. Totally fine. Um, we're just using extraction, because why not? Leg drip pooling in the corner. Great. And then again, when it's pooling, I'm going to fix that mask so that it kind of fits our geometry a little bit better. So this should kind of go here nice and pooling in our little divot here and then also through here we'll make it nice and pooly also um watch the new season of white lotus it's pretty crazy my opinion i don't know why that popped in my head when i said pooly uh maybe jennifer's name and we'll okay we're pulling this in here i'm going to pull this right in here and then 
we'll thin that out and then the little globules will come down uh, again I can sculpt out the actual globules here and then this is another little thin one and then over here just making sure our pooling makes sense through here this goes up to this area here and again I'm gonna be moving the stuff around not a huge deal it's not perfect just happy little waffle splatter yoink up and around and down all right I think we're in good shape so let's talk about extraction hey you all know what extraction is but in case you don't let's go over here to uh, Subtool extract and uh, anything that's masked it will extract into its own piece of geometry with thickness and smooth uh, We'll go ahead and keep thickness and smooth on the thickness. I'm going to crank down a bit. It looks like And we can always thicken it up it Doesn't have to be perfect, but so here's my general Geometry that's popping out right that looks good to me uh, So we'll say accept and that'll give me my geometry Nice and extracted, and I am going to see if I can't do. I'm going to grab this little piece here, Control Shift A. Grab a little piece of this one here, Control Shift A. Grab a little piece of this one here, Control Shift A. So now I can get rid of those pieces here. Delete hidden. I'm immediately just going to go in here immediately, dynamesh this, and maybe even yeah, let's do this. Hold down Shift to smooth. I'm going to start smoothing this here. So we've just got a nice dynamesh extracted mesh based on our previous geometry and so now we have total control of how we want to manipulate those um, but I think that'll work I think that'll work just fine clay brush alt sculpt it in and then we can do whatever we need to do. so here on this one and in fact what I might do grab a little piece control shift day split hidden alt tap control shift day split hidden Turn off polyframe or colorize so I know what I'm doing. And then here, I'm going to go through here and I'm going to inflate because again, it's pooling in here, right? So we're going to uh, let's do this brush auto masking topological range down to maybe 1.5. And we can go through here and now we can move this one separately from that. So as the stuff is pooling in this little crevice here, we can hold down shift to smooth. Um, Shift to smooth, uh, inflate brush, I just have a hotkey for that. So now we're just gonna inflate, or maybe even standard brush is fine. Is the add on, RGB off, colorize off. There we go, so now we're just, we're really fine tuning our waffle splatter. Hold down shift to smooth here, as the intensity's up. How many polygons is this? Hey, come on. And then we got this, cool. And uh, even that kind of flipping down over uh, is totally fine too. And this will kind of come up to the arm here. And this I'm going to kind of just merge in with our existing arm. I think that's fair. Uh, if you want to, you can hold down Shift with Sculptors Pro and that'll smooth and Sculptors Pro. And that'll eat away your geometry um, if your smooth is working a little bit too slow for your appetite. Okay. It doesn't really match exactly. Let's, I mean, again, I don't know how exact I'm going to get with this in a live stream. That's the thing, too, is if you really want to dial it in, a lot of it is just brute force, go in and match it and sculpt and match it and sculpt. It's not real fun to watch. That's when I would say, I'm not going to live stream anymore. I will time lapse my work. I'm going to go in here and inflate, move, shift, clay brush, shift smooth maybe build it up here a little bit again I like in the pooling area having this here's another thing too is if you're on a very thin mesh and you're like using I don't know clay buildup or something it is gonna pull from the back if your brush size is big enough if you don't have back face masking turned on which I have it turned on automatically for clay buildup you might not. So if you're just using the clay brush or the standard brush, you could end up, end up having to do this. And then if you pull through and you redynamesh, it's going to get nasty. So standard brush, gel, uh, brush, auto masking, back face masking turned on. I have a little button out here. If you need more information on that, look on my channel and go to, um, I mean, heck, you could just search for custom interface or custom menu, but also in the intro to ZBrush, again, if you're brand new to ZBrush, 
this here. Check this out. It'll get you caught up. So we have shift smooth, shift smooth. And it looks like there's another globule on here. So if we go in here to B for a brush, I think there's a um, concrete, I think is pretty good clay. Hmm. Uh, what is it? It's a brush and it's like a, um, I don't, I barely ever use it, but it is useful for like wax and like uh, little drippy buildups. Soft clay maybe. Again, I have a hotkey for backface masking too for any brush I might be using. It's not bad, but it's not really what I was looking for. Uh, I thought something in here would be useful, but maybe not. Hey, you know what? When in doubt, brute force. Standard brush here, just to kind of drag this down, maybe inflate a little bit. Now we'll have, uh, oh, another thing you can do is use a clay brush. You can go in here to your brush depth, turn on, just tap on gravity strength. This arrow dictates what direction it's going in. Um, so if we crank this up to 100 and then point the arrow down, as you're sculpting, it'll kind of pull down at the same time. Um, so that way it can kind of overlap as you're kind of sculpting. Um, turn off infinite depth. I think that's why I was having a problem earlier. Anyway, globs, globs, globs. This one here is just about right. I am going to scoot it down just a little bit into that crevice. Standard brush, back face masking on. Build this up, maybe thin this out just a bit. Move it into place. All right, so we've got our goops on there. Uh, we don't need this little placeholder anymore, so we'll delete it out of our scene. And we'll drip onto the floor as well. Uh, eh, you know what, let's do it. Turn everything else back on. Floor, duplicate, solo, control. Oh, oops. Let's turn off dynamic. Since we've already learned extraction, we'll just do that again. So we'll mask here, mask here, mask here. It looks right. And extract again. Good enough. Except we don't need this duplicate. Delete. Um, looks like I accidentally masked this. Delete hidden. Go to unmash mesh center. Scale these down a bit. I could these could be just just setting on here. Make sure it makes sense. Makes enough sense to me. Although, scooch this out just a little bit. Turn on infinite depth if you want to be real careful, but I think we'll be fine. Okay, um, Dynamesh. We'll turn this resolution up just a bit. Smooth, smooth, smooth. And now to connect these, uh, we'll just grab this little piece here. So B S H, sure, sculptress. And we'll just continue these down. And in fact, I'm gonna grab this one. We're gonna say split mass points. Oops, no, we're not. We're gonna say split hidden. And then these two I want to merge together. So merge them down, dynamesh them together. Go in here with your inflate. You dynamesh smooth. And then turn these all back on. This one doesn't go to anything, but I'll go ahead and make it its own. Split hidden, shift to smooth. Scooch it down a little bit. And then this one here, these should be merged. So I'm gonna hold down shift, shoot it down to the bottom. Alt tap this one, shift, shoot it down to the bottom. So now these are 
in the same proximity. So first, uh, yeah, BSH or whatever, Sculptors Pro if you'd like. Pull down. It's gonna kind of fatten up once it hits the glob. Go in here with our inflate brush, or redynamesh, smooth, and then merge. All right. Sticky, sticky. Now it's eight o'clock. I'm gonna spudge a little bit just so we can get a lat nice little last little bit of this face here for our block out. Um, so immediately, I want to do that in an Arnold voice. Uh, okay, so we're gonna go. Uh, let's do a little higher resolution. Dynamesh. There we go. Hold down Shift, and you can kind of generally smooth. You can hold down Shift and turn down the intensity. On my Shift, for me, it won't be for you, but by default, I have my Shift set to weighted smooth mode. So I'll do that and then I'll turn down my Z intensity just so I can kind of do a, just a soft shift here. I'm gonna turn off this stuff back here. Um, so go through here, you can smooth, you can also go down here to deformation and you can do a, you can do just a smooth. So you can say smooth all this together at once or you can just do it, you can do a polish. You can do a polish by feature, but I don't think in our case it'll work. So we're just gonna polish that back just to kind of bump those edges back just a bit. Um, and then for any of the little straggly little pieces that aren't really working, Shift, Sculptors Pro, again, you just eat that stuff away. Eat it away. That doesn't make any sense. Eat it away. This little ridge here, eat it away. So Sculptors Pro to the rescue. This little ridge here, don't like it. Just looking for like little weird areas that like wouldn't really exist on a waffle. Do your waffle research. Go get your associate associate's degree in waffleology and you'll learn the ways of the waffle and how they function I'll tell you what's really good um, udon is it called udon waffles from Trader Joe's oh my god they're like crispy on the outside <sighs> chewy on the inside doing a lot of free advertising today white lotus Trader Joe's Udon Waffles. Okay, there we go. So now face. Um, <laughs> this is gonna be so gross. So we want on this one, I'm gonna go ahead and turn X symmetry on, but we're gonna keep it local symmetry in the Z direction. So I can just sculpt a symmetrical face on him, I think, although he's, yeah, he's symmetrical, great. So the eyeballs feel like they need to be pushed in a little bit more. Don't wanna push them in too much. And then for him, let's go ahead and switch him. Oh, so I just want his eyeballs and his waffle body. So shift, bent down arrow, alt tap, shift, bent down arrow, shift, turn everything else off, but those two. And let's go in here to start up material. Why that seems dark after using that for so long. Um, the skin shader. So I'm gonna go in here to material and we're gonna say modifiers, and I'm gonna take this intensity A up a little bit. Okay, back to the comments real quick. Um, um, yes, first Thursday of the month on my channel. First Tuesday of the month, I'll be on uh, Pixelogic's channel, but I always copy the videos over my YouTube channel, so we're good. Cool, uh, coming in ZBrush 2023, so just been just rendering, less sculpting updates. Yeah, I mean, hey, I'll take uh, Redshift and ZBrush. Um, <laughs> uh, Marvel Designer ruined my 2D arrangement, 3D arrangement of a default shirt. How can I reset the default shirt in Marvelous Designer? Oh, 2D arrangement and 3D arrangement of a default shirt. Oof. You might have to reinstall. I don't know. Maybe not. They Their library might. I'm not sure how their libraries work. I can't. Off the top of my head, I'm not sure. Um, mesh splat. Be fast for the goo. Yeah, that's a good one. I totally forgot about that one. So let's talk about that. BC. Again, if you ever, if I ever say something in passing and I don't really explain it, usually what you can go in here and just do splat. And sometimes I'll do this myself where I'll go and be like, what? How do I do mesh splat again? So I'll watch this guy Michael Pavlovich explain it to me so I can remember um, but it's under B 
control masking. There's a mesh splat. There's also uh, mesh project might actually work really good too for this type of stuff. So control and then mask here. Um, let me see here. Let me turn off everything but this one here. Um, control. Let me remember. Let me remember. Stroke. Lazy mouse off. So we have a mask here. How does this work? Mesh project. <laughs> I don't remember how it works. Mesh balloon. Um, <laughs> to tell you how often I use these. Anyway, when was that released? That was. Um, I want to say ZBrush 2021.5. Oh, I don't remember. Yep, yep. ZBrush 2021.5. If you want to learn more about the. Uh, well, that's Mesh Splat. So it must have been. Oh, boy. 2021. Now, that was a huge playlist. That's 106 videos because it was a monster of a release. But. Um, Somewhere in here, oh, mesh. Oh, there. I forgot. These are all part of the same playlist. Uh, mesh balloon, mesh extrude. Hey, everybody. Or surfacey uh, with mesh balloon, you could get control going here to back over here. So mesh extrude. Uh, it has lasso stroke, stroke as the default, which means of course you can go through here and you can draw this on. And just like before, you can hold down control, go into stroke, and if I just grab the stroke menu back over. I mean, that's what I'm doing, right? What am I missing here? Do I need to have something on? I forgot. Um, mesh project, mesh extrude. I don't know. Maybe I'm missing a setting, but yes, that should work. Um, cool. Uh, absolutely. Thank you, John. You. Uh, complex DynaMesh model and zero mesh isn't working. Would breaking it up work or would I need to do something else? So complex DynaMesh model and you can't zero mesh it. Um, yeah, he, simplifying the zero mesh ask could work. Now, if it's just erroring out, you may need to go down here to geometry. Oh boy, geometry, mesh integrity, fix mesh, um, DynaMesh at a slightly lower resolution, fix mesh. Um, you can also do a union remesh by union but in that case if you really if it's really tricky sometimes what I'll do is go in here to instead of doing a geometry dynamesh I'll do a remesh a subtool remesh and that'll make an envelope out of what you see and then you can use your project brushes to project an envelope around your mesh your dynamesh close any holes that's good for 3d printing stuff but um, yeah breaking it up would help if you need to do a Z remesh specifically um, yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, blob. Is there a blob brush? Seem like yes. Is that what I was looking for? So silly. I should have known that. Um, it just makes sense. Yes, this is good for. That's exactly right. Thank you, uh, Doug. So we'll put this back here. This one. So the Alt Tap here. Turn off Sculptor Pro with our blob brush. Yeah, this one's awesome for like this type of um, kind of like wax or pancake build up or something. So we'll increase that resolution here. Again, any oop, mask. Oh, it did it. Oh, okay, think, think, think. So control, mask, mesh project. Maybe because I was in solo mode. Oh, draw size down, draw size down. Oh, is it thickness? Um, thickness, think Mike. Oh, I'm freezing up. My brain's gone. Um, Z intensity. <laughs> it all makes sense, right? Does that work? No. Uh, mm, I don't know. Yes, use those brushes. Um, infinite depth is awesome in that, uh, for example, if I have an object like this and I'm looking straight down at it and I start moving it, you're gonna see it's gonna pull based on the brush radius. So it's gonna move this front part more than the back part. However, if I go over here to brush infinite depth and in the Y direction, because we're looking straight down at it, it'll move everything together. So very, very useful. Cool. 
mesh balloon lasso. Oh, start your lasso on the yeah. Oh, maybe that's why. Okay, so mesh project. I want to make it very small. I want to see intensity. Oh, where is it? Modifiers. Strength multiplier? No. Brush modifier. Is that it? One? No. Man, this is the kind of thing too. Okay, so strength multiplier down. Oh, Z intensity. It is working. I just was being stupid for some reason. So, for uh, instead of doing an extraction, which you could do, let's go out of solo mode here. Again, thank you. Um, starting over the mesh. Uh, let's So we're gonna go through here, and if we mask now, ah, look at that. Now, if you want to do like really quick uh, slice of cheese on here, you can go through and you can just kind of put some little waffle blop blops there. Cool. Um, oops. Move that back where it should go. Anyway, anyway, uh, focus, Mike. So again, eyeballs, face. Uh, before we have to leave, we're gonna go through here, and I'm just going to slight, ever so slightly modify this clay brush gravity off here or clay build up and I'm going to scoot this eye over just a little bit here Maybe down a little bit too, because it looks like right in between, right in this. Oh, we're gonna have to scale these up a little bit, aren't we? Okay, uh, X symmetry turned on, uh, L sim turned on, unmatched mesh center, scale it up, scooch, down. So this is like the little eye sockets here. It's not gonna match perfectly, but I think that's what the intent was. X symmetry back on. Here we'll kind of just give this a little. Just a happy little eye socket, little waffle eye socket here. Okay. Nose, right through here, little button nose. Uh, if you wanted to get real fancy, you could go in here and be like, hey, I'm gonna um, move my, do my stylized modeling where I move a bunch of these things around. Um, w, control, drag out a copy with X symmetry turned off. And then maybe um, scale this down. And then mirror and weld across the Z. So that type of modeling, uh, or you could just use your brush. Uh, in this case here, I am gonna, you know what? Let's do this. Let's say control tab this one. Um, let's do this. Auto groups, W, control tab. I am gonna do a quick mirror and weld again. And then W, scooch, control drag out. This will kind of be the upper lip here. And this just gives you a little bit more control to kind of move shapes around. So if I take here, let's go back here. So rectangle and lips, we'll say split mass points. I'm oh, sorry, uh, split hidden. And then in this one too, we'll say auto groups so I can split hidden. And then we'll just kind of mash this around. So it's kind of, kind of got a upper lip kind of little fold. This looks like it kind of goes underneath. In a mouth type way. All right, I think we've got a block out. The beginnings, the trappings of a beautiful garbage pail kid recreation. Uh, the nose here, I think, is about right. He's a little bit more facing us, but I can't really cheat that angle too much. I might have to change the focal length. But generally, the right shape. So I'm going to take this nose, 
take the body, merge it onto the nose, control drag to read Dynamesh or turn Dynamesh back on. Let's raise that resolution just a tiny bit here. All right, so now the nose is stuck with this one here, all nice and Dynameshed. And then we'll put in a little bit of detail. Standard brush. A little clay brush or clay buildup. Again, just a little little toddler nose, little Cupid nose. Standard brush here. And it's made out of waffle, so it doesn't probably have to be super anatomically correct. And then this mouth part here. We'll go ahead and dynamesh this too. Let's shift to smooth. Looks like it even even in the the drawing. I keep saying like you like you can see it. Uh, it looks like it's actually a separate piece too. It's kind of got a lot of ambient occlusion around it. So we'll just leave it. I don't want it to look like a mustache, but we'll just leave it for now. Uh, turn everything back on. Go through here. We'll turn on perspective. We'll see if we can't catch a cool camera angle here. Close enough. Something like this. Save as 04. All in a morning's work. We got a garbage pail uh, thing. Something like that. Yeah, we could we could build that up to around the head if we want to match that a little bit better. But okay. Do a quick BPR render. Let's do this. Let's do our light rotated around here. We're going to go into render shadow. We're going to crank up that angle just a bit and also the rays bump that up to like 24. There we go. Waffle. Okay. Yes, starts on it. Absolutely. Oops. Oh, all the little things I forget. Um, Cool, cool. Move topologic brush is useful. Yes, uh, I usually have my brush settings open, so I'll do uh, modifier. Uh, sorry, um, auto masking. Auto masking. Auto masking. I'll just have topological turn on here. But there is a BM. There's a topological and a curve and an elastic. And if you go into your comma key, there is move brushes galore in here. So L M O move. Yeah, move brushes in here. Cool. Oops. Yep, you're right. Let me see here. Um, so that's that one. I wonder what happened. Uh, so we can move multiple if we need to. So we can hit uh, U, W, solo. Actually, what I'm going to do is just scooch this back just a bit I think will be the easier choice there we go Whew. oh and if we want a slightly nicer fall off on like this one again crease level of maybe two smooth set of three um, or how many crease level one smooth set of four same thing for this one Maybe two smooths of a three. Yeah, a little bit nicer. Uh, oh, these things need to be fixed too, but eh, whatever. You get the point. All right, absolutely. Thank you, Doug. Thank you, everybody. Um, catch you on Tuesday on uh, Pixelogic's channel. And of course, it'll be back on my YouTube channel too if you want to check it out there. All right.